back in the 2.0 book, all right, the study guide, and and you will see once you once you get going in here, and you guys haven't started your uh, practice exams yet. Don't start those yet. It's, it's too soon. Okay, you won't get an, a a good good outcome because you don't. We haven't had the EKG stuff yet. But uh, do do continue in order to study this this part here and uh, read and highlight like I've done in mine. Okay, uh, like we started in in the other one. Know the objectives. The objectives is very important. This is where they get the the questions from. Okay, I've done a, a few of the questions because mine doesn't, like you're limited, right, on the number of times that you can do your pra practice exam. I've dabbled in them a little bit, and I've picked up questions out of here, out of the guide that's on the, on the study uh, questions, okay? We will sit back, and once we get going in that... Uh, <coughs> We will have to make a slight adjustment in the way that you read the questions. Okay, I've only encountered one. Of course, I haven't done that many questions yet. I'm going to do the whole thing before you guys do. Uh, but the the questions are not written in the way that uh, that are that what you're used to. Okay, I'll give you an example. Maybe it'll clear it up. Okay. We were talking about if, if, you get, if the, P, the PCT goes into the room and uh, realizes the patient is unresponsive, what should you do next, right? And one of them was tap the patient and see if they're okay or check for responsiveness, right? And the, the other one that I picked that was incorrect was call the co team, okay? So what would you guys do? Check for responsiveness. Okay. Yeah. The, yeah. Exactly. The question was, they were already unresponsive. So in my mind, call the code team. They're unresponsive. I've already checked for responsiveness because the question told me they were unresponsive. It was wrong. <laughs> it says tap them and see if they're okay. So, uh, yeah, exactly. The way that they've written that question is is not a good way to write the question. It should say they appear to be unresponsive. If they appear to be unresponsive, then you would check for responsiveness, right? Uh, I can't help that. So we're, we're going to have to, when, when we do the, the, the exam and the practice exam, we're going to have to get used to sort of that, that trend, okay? And maybe you'll see that in the practice exams, maybe not, but and we'll retool everything for that. Now, once you take your PCT exam and you pass it, your PCT, forget that, because you need to go back to reading the question and understanding what they're asking you, and uh, when the question says the patient's unresponsive, they've already checked for responsiveness, but maybe not in this world, okay? We'll work that out. We'll work that out, okay? Uh, it's, it's just the different way that the, the questions are written. Anyway, we won't worry about that now, but do work through there, know the objectives, okay? The first part through here is just body systems. Uh, you should know the anatomy by now. Okay? If you don't know the anatomy by now, you are well behind. Okay? Look like way behind. So know the, we did this, when? I mean like the, yeah, the first couple weeks. I think I even wrote it on the board here. Know the body systems and the functions of the organs, right? Know that. You have to know that. You have to know the functions of the organs and the body systems, okay? They're, they're listed out there in plain English for you, so we won't, we won't go over that. You have to know the vocabulary. There is no way, it, it doesn't uh, matter what exam that you're taking, you cannot pass that exam if you don't know the vocabulary. It's an impossibility, okay? Uh, 
you can use good test taking techniques to figure out the things that you, you may not know, but if you don't know the words, you won't, you won't pass the test. You won't know what they're talking about, right? Infectious disease, like caused by bacteria, right? Uh, acute means sudden an onset in medicine, means something that happened quickly. And quickly is not like in the last second. Quickly is maybe three or four hours in medicine is an acute event. Degenerative means an aging process, right? We're, the tissues are wearing down, the body's wearing down. All right? Don't worry, you'll be there one day. Okay? I mean, uh, when it gets wet, I know it. My thumb hurts. Okay? Uh, my back is stiff every morning. I wake up. I'm just old, falling apart, right? Uh, so, anyway, uh, so everything after 40 is true. It takes place. It's, it's just expected, right? Alright, so I mean, all these things take place, and I'm in good health, but we still have these, these things that take place, right? Alright, so, uh, anyhow, so do know the vocabulary, it's usually bolded in, in print there. In my book, I went through, and I, I, I got tired of writing question. So I just started putting Q later, so I know what that means. But every time that I read this, I highlight it and said, that's a good test question. Okay? You should do the same thing as you go through. Uh, it's, it's just like this, this first part here. The patient care technician performing tasks assigned by the nurse, right? So you're going to be assigned tasks by the nurse. Okay? You're going to look at changes monitor ADLs, activities of daily living, bathing, eating. So you have to know what your scope of practice is, what you can do, correct? Measure vital signs, transfer patient. And here, this last thing on the top paragraph says report changes in their condition to the nursing staff. And I, and I put a lot of questions underneath there. That, that's what I wrote. Because in the test, they're going to say, what would you do in, in real life? What would you do? Okay? If you're in the room with someone and all of a sudden they're blue and they're not a smurf, right? <laughs> then you would report that, correct? Yes. Or they're vomiting, you need to report that to the nurse. Anything abnormal, you would report to the nurse. And a lot of the questions on here is that you recognize what's abnormal. Okay? We've been doing that all year long, so this is nothing new for you. I think when we started the medical emergencies, we, we said this is normal, this is abnormal. And you can't understand what's abnormal until you understand what's normal, right? Is that true? Okay. So, do that. Uh, identify the patient, introduce yourself. See, it comes into the things that we're not really used to. So when you come up to a conscious patient, the, one of the questions may be, what's the first thing that you do? Introduce yourself, right? You come into the patient's room and introduce yourself, right? Now, if they're not breathing, don't worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, you know, oh, hey, my name's Randy, PCT. You have a nice shade of blue to you. Right? <laughs> that's, that's beautiful, okay? Uh, explain the procedures. Patients, uh, make sure, and this is a question here, that you will see, especially... On the, on the practice exam, you're going to you explain a procedure to the patient, you want them to verbalize back to you understanding. There were several questions on the test last year where the, they asked, does the patient have good, under, you know, they had a little scenario up there, but it says, does the patient have good understanding of the procedure or the medication or something, and they gave choices down or to show which of the following choices show that this patient has good understanding, right? So you have to understand the procedure and what takes place. And, and there's a variety 
of them. It's, it's too many to go into. Like, you know, uh, if they think that they're going to drink their albuterol, okay, they don't have good understanding of the medicine, huh? Yeah. I don't think you can drink that. You can. Yeah, if somebody did it, somebody has to, right? So, it goes into several things in, in uh, bathing. Right? So you just need to be familiar with the, the types of procedures. You know, what what are you going to have to have, okay, with you? Uh, those those types of things. And there's a, there's a list, you know, the towels, the things. You don't, you don't want to run back and forth, right? You don't want to get Granny wet and realize that you don't have a towel in there and have to go get a towel and leave Granny wet, right? So, uh, or you don't want to get in there and just have to go back and forth uh, when you're bathing the patient. Right? Most of the questions that I've seen uh, were on safe, safety, right? Safety for the patient, safety for you, just like it says in here. Hey, put non-skid socks. Those hospital socks, they're really cool because they have that non-skid stuff on the bottom of them, right? And they're cool because you don't have to look at people's ugly feet. <laughs> you can put socks on them. Uh, never leave the patient alone. All of these are going to be in a scenario type question which you guys are well used to understanding, right? So, they're just not going to be general knowledge. So they're going to say, as a PCT, you're doing this, and it's going to give you a scenario. So these questions here, take your time reading, okay? Read the entire question. Understand what it's asking you. Read all four responses, right? Then, then answer the question. We'll go through a lot of technique stuff before you guys take the exam. It's very important for now and in the future. All medical questions, not all, but the majority of medical exams when you're in that discipline are scenario-based. Right. So get used to taking those. You, you, you already are, okay? Keep the bed rails up on the opposite side that you're bathing, right? So if, if this is the bed, I'm bathing on this side, raise the rail up. Lift the bed up to your level so you don't have to bend over. Those are questions that were on there. We don't want, why don't we want to bend over? Huh? You hurt yourself, right? Years of bending over is, uh, can, can cause some, some back problems, right? <clears throat> I'm used to this position here. Okay, because in an ambulance, we can't raise the cot up to us. When it's in the in the ambulance, it's it's pretty low. So we're either bent over or sitting down like this, right? Try not to sit on the patient, but you know, uh, here. So the short stand that I had working in the emergency department, I would bend over, that's what I'm used to. And everybody would say, hey, won't you raise the bed up to where you are so you don't have to bend over. Oh yeah, that's right. But then I don't have to bend over. Saves the back. Okay. Uh, plus, you look at the patient more. You bend over, all they see is my bald head. So. Uh, what nice skin you have. <laughs> then it comes in here and just says some common sense. Hey, this is a common sense type of thing. If I'm if I'm uh, bathing a patient, I'm not going to scrub the patient. Okay. <laughs> I did my job. Okay. Um, okay. Gentle motion, bathing. So look at that. Okay. It goes in. Uh, directions on how to, to to bathe. Okay. So when we take a shower, we should be bathing from top to bottom. <laughs> so you do this, the patient the same way. Uh, it, and, it, and it gives you in there, if they have a catheter, you know, and it gives you, hey, pull the bag up, secure the bag on the side of the bed, not the rail, okay? That was a, again, I have a question there. That was a question last, last time. Where do you put the, where do you put the Foley catheter, okay? On, on the, on the side of the, uh, the bed, not, not the rail. It can get hung up there, right? 
and plus it's up higher and it doesn't drain. A, a Foley catheter drains by gravity, so it has to be lower. Okay, so you put it up high, it won't, it won't drain, for one, and you put it in, in up there, uh, the urine will drain back into the bladder, right, would cause infection. So you won't, you don't want the Foley catheter up here, you want it lower. Okay, uh, they go into this thing, that, this is new from last year, the SITZ, SITZ, S-I-T-Z bath, okay, I guess it's just like a little, little, sink bath or something, you know, a little quick bath, okay? Uh, these are type of questions that you see you're giving, like say you're giving the patient a bath and you notice these things, what do you do, right? You notice that they have rashes, bleeding, swollen areas, unusual odors besides the stench of the, because you're giving them a bath, right? Excessive draining, disorientation, burning, blah, blah, blah. Notify the nurse, right? I mean, the same, it's sort of the same thing over, oh, notify the nurse, yeah, you're bathing someone and all of a sudden you, you, you smell something that you can't even describe, you probably should go tell the nurse, what is that smell, you know, it, it's probably coming from their body, it may be something bad, good, so, uh, read it through there, this is, this, how do you say that, sits, this is something that, you, they give after pregnancy. You know, they just need to clean up a little bit. They don't need a full bath. And so mom has a baby and they, they're, they're going to clean, clean up. Okay? But again, like what I did, I highlighted that. I was like, I'm not even sure what that is. When I read it, I didn't know. Right? So I highlighted and read it. like, okay. So like, old people call it a spit bath. Not that you don't, you, you know, <laughs> spitting on the patient, but you're just sort of getting some water and sort of wiping them, wiping them down, rinsing them off a little bit, okay? Oral care, this is something new that's there. Uh, just like with the ADLs, let the patient do as much as possible. But sometimes, so these things that, like on the second and third floor in the hospital, that you're going, ooh, don't want to do that, or the PC, you do want to do that, okay, so you can get, because once you do it, then it concrete it up here, that, oh yeah, it gives the definition of compressions, right, so you, you want to, you want to actually do these things, you want to bathe the patient, well, do that, okay, uh, so, motion, 45 degrees, circular motion at 45 degrees, angle in their gums, back and forth, Good test question, right? The angle. What angle do you put the toothbrush in? Okay. What are you going to need? They're going to need somewhere to spit the toothpaste out, correct? Uh, not everybody swallows their toothpaste. Uh, dentures. Ooh, hate removing dentures. <laughs> okay. But it gives you a thing where you go down through there and keep track of Granny's teeth. Okay. Uh, and it sort of gives you a step-by-step -step process on, on how to do this, all right? Again, not the procedure, okay? And really, a lot of it is common, common sense, dumb, and you'll see that. Uh, update the nurse. So you go in there and you're doing oral care and you see something like bleeding gums, canker sores, or something. Who do we smell? All right? Diabetic. Diabetic, ketoacidosis. You're blowing off those ketones. What do you do? No report. Report the nurse. Report the nurse. <laughs> okay, so you report that. Uh, bed making, you're going to say, oh yeah, come over here and help me make this bed. That's something that you have to get into, especially when the, it's nothing to make the bed with nobody in it. Uh, but learn how to make a bed, a list of things that you need to know, okay? Uh, when this is a good test question here when transporting clean linens hold them away from your body uh, whether you realize it or not but you're, those pathogens collect you're, you're like a big bus for microorganisms they get on your scrubs and they, your hands and everything else people don't think about clothing 
about the little buggies jumping on your scrubs, but they're there. So you don't want to hold somebody's leaning up against you when you've seen 20 patients that day, right? And you're 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 holding the linen like this up against you, carrying it down the hall. You want to hold it away from you because you have microorganisms on your scrubs. That's why when you are in your dark blue scrubs, right? They, they want to cover all that up. Anyway, very good as far as if 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 I was writing the test, what would what would I do as a test question? Okay, ask ask yourself that. Roll the patient over to one side. A lot of you have done this. You roll the patient over and you tuck the sheet underneath them, but then you have to clean the mattress. Then you put the clean on top, roll the patient back onto the clean, and then take the dirty and then wipe the mattress. Uh, as far as I know, they haven't gotten to a lot of the procedure stuff, but these, these safety questions are always there. Make sure the bed rails are up and the wheels are locked. That was a question. The wheels are locked. Bed, and all of a sudden you see Granny coming down and <laughs> passing her bed, right? She goes, holy cow, move out of the way. <laughs> Originally, like on TV, they rolled down the hill and catapulted out the window. <laughs> you know, <laughs> She's in the ER. I have three. I stopped making the question. I put cues now. Uh, when you're dressing a patient, patients and the oral care and all this, you're, you're not the victim. <laughs> it, it may seem like that, that in, in every job there's stuff that you don't like to do, but remember, you're, you're not the, the, the worst on the, on the pole here, the sick person in the bed. There's not, I don't think there's too many people alive that like someone else to brush their teeth, wipe their butt, change their bed, right? Most people, 99.9% .9 of them, percent of people, would very much like to get out of bed and do it themselves, okay? I had this one lady, she was probably 600 pounds or so, and it took 10 of us to move her in her trailer and everything. And we got her up to her bed, and we were trying, and she, went, she was just driving away, driving away. She goes, get my phone, get this, get this, get this. And I stopped, and I said, okay, <clears throat> everybody except me, leave the room for a second. And they're like, just give me a, give me a minute. Everybody laughed. No witnesses. Okay, and I said, hey, listen, I understand your dilemma here. <clears throat> and you can't move and you like all this stuff close. But we're here to help you, not to be your servants. Okay? So that's the 2% that I'm talking about. Okay? So we had a little chat. Was it me? I just told her, I said, hey, quit griping at us. Because we're here to, only to help you. Not, but we're, we're not here as, as your, your servants, right? <clears throat> You know, anyhow, we, we had that conversation and she was sort of nice and quiet and we left, right? And there's no witnesses. But, uh, <laughs> but remember, there's no, so now the 98% of the people, they don't like this either. They'd rather do this themselves. Okay, there's nobody that really that likes you to do that. Okay, anyhow, so keep, keep that in mind as you're, we're talking about these tasks, okay, uh, that they'd rather be doing it themselves. Okay, but there's some good test questions here about the weak side. So you have a patient that, uh, if the patient, they have a weak side from a stroke or surgery, work with that side first. That's an excellent question as far as uh, scenario-based questions. This one about the IV is actually on your uh, your pra practice exam, okay? You have an IV line. You have the patient in a hospital gown. You're changing the hospital gown. Okay, which one do you take out first? Okay, it says here, the, take out the, the arm without the IV, without the, uh, with the IV out. Okay, hang on. I without the IV line out. Yeah, first. Right. So 
If the IV's in the right, you take the left arm out first, right? Then you feed the, feed the IV through the gown. Remove the gown and then feed the IV through, through the sleeve, okay? Very important. So, you know, when, when you're looking at that, you're, you're feeding these lines through, okay? Down at the bottom, if they're on a pump, here's something that would be an excellent test question. If they're on a pump, the nurse has to come in and stop the infusion pump. You can't stop the infusion pump. That's outside your scope of practice. Okay? So the nurse will have to come in and stop the pump so you can feed the... You can't put the IV pole on the, the pump all through the, the hole in the gown. Okay. I, one time, i got to tell you this. I, I won't tell you now. But it is, it has got to be the funniest thing in 20-something years that I have ever seen in my life. And I couldn't stop laughing. The patient was unresponsive, so we could all laugh out loud. But I couldn't stop laughing. I, I, liked it. I almost literally fell out of the ambulance laughing so hard. But I'll tell you later. Can't stop Talking about that gown, that big hole in the gown. Anyway, so uh, they have to come in and do that. Improper technique of this can, can introduce uh, bacteria into the sterile environment, to the line, to the pump, okay? Again, good test question, something very important to, to remember, okay? Grooming, hair, you know, showering, washing people's hair, you know, when you go in to wash someone's hair, you only hope to see this, this head, right? Let me get a towel, wipe that off, okay? So, uh, there's technique with it. Uh, now, I don't know. I, I haven't had hair in so long, I can't remember. But do you like, like when you get your hair cut, do you like people washing your hair? Yeah, um, no. No. What do you mean? Why not? You go get your hair cut. Don't they still wash your hair when you get your hair cut? Do you like that or not? Yeah, you know they massage your scalp. And, yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't know, it's been too many moons for me, but hey, uh, there's, there's a technique behind that. Mr. McGee, we still need a picture of you with him. Yeah, that won't happen. No, you won't. Uh, going to the toilet is another thing. You know, we have people, they can get up and go to the toilet. We have IV lines and things that that we have to make sure uh, sometimes they can't get up. So you have to you have a bedpan or a urinal. Uh, none of this is good, really. I mean, for the patient, this is uncomfortable uh, in in more ways than one. But uh, uh, because it's abnormal, it's it's not the norm. Most people get up and go to the toilet, right? And so when you have to introduce a bedpan or a urinal, it's, it's difficult, okay? Anyway, uh, the call light, I have another cue by there. The call light, have the call light in reach of the patient so when they're done, they can call you back in, right? Okay, never leave a confused or unstable patient alone. So you keep them... You would never leave them by themselves. Yeah, you go to the yeah. You, you do. That, that's a good question, by the way. So maybe you're helping them. You're just assisting them to the bathroom. They can get up and walk, but they're confused or they're unstable on their feet or whatever. Most of the time they have a bedside toilet, but commode, but you can walk them too, but you would stay with them, okay? Uh, in gender. Like, I'm not going to sit another, like a female patient, I'm not going to take a female patient to the toilet and uh, sit near one nurse or somebody. That's why I have to go get a female and do that. That would be inappropriate. <clears throat> a male, I would, <clears throat> you know, stand there with them and make sure they didn't fall or something, right? So, uh, and, it, of course, they're confused or whatever. They may not know, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, how many people can pee with someone standing right behind them? You know? <laughs> uh, anyway, you might have to do in and outs, measure in and outputs, right? Empty the bedpan. Uh, uh, they may need uh, 
baby powder or, or drying or, you know, something of assistance that, you know, nobody likes to do, but they may need that. So, uh, that's why you, and again, it's a good time when, uh, you because the patient care tech is the one that is in the front line. They're the one that has the most contact with the patient, okay? okay. If you want the maximum amount of patient contact, okay, in, in your career, then stay a PCT, stay a tech. You're gonna to starve to death, okay? <laughs> you know, but you're gonna, that's where you have the maximum amount of patient care. The nurses and the doctors, especially doctors, Help clean somebody up. Never. Zero, right? Almost. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> How many times have you seen a doctor start uh, like a peripheral IV? <clears throat> now, now they do picks and, and central lines, right? Uh, the nurse comes in and gives the medicine, but she gives the medicine and boom, they're out. They go charge. The tech does every charge. They, Tech does everything else. Okay, so the maximum amount is uh, patient contact is at the tech level. Okay, whatever they call them, patient care techs or PCA, patient care associates, associates, or they have all different name titles for them. Okay, uh, but you're just not going to earn a good living doing that. Not the living that you want. Okay, uh, so. Uh, all right, so eating, everybody, there's not too many people like to be fed, okay, the same, same thing, so there's a, there's things through there, here, oh, back to the toilet train, just for a second, so you look, and all of a sudden, you know, the patient goes to the bathroom, they have a strong odor through their urine, or it's discolored, or whatever, okay, uh, you know, again, nobody likes looking at urine, Really, I mean, what you do at work today? You know, I don't believe it. It was the best day ever. I got to observe Mr. Smith's urine <laughs> and, and, and measure it. Wow, <laughs> right? Okay, you know, yeah. but if you notice something abnormal, then you report that to the nurse. You're going in getting a urine sample, you report that to the nurse, right? Hey, this is cloudy. This looks like it has blood in it. Whatever. It's not black, yellow, clear urine. It's floaties in it. It's supposed to be floaties in it. Okay? So uh, there should never be floaties in milk or never in urine. Right? Little chunks in milk. Uh -uh. Don't drink it. Eating, same way. Measure inputs, outputs, right? Uh, this is like re so repetitive. It gives opportunity to determine the patient for the PCT to determine if the patient's having difficulty swallowing. Uh, don't try to, even though you're in a hurry, don't try to force, you know, a big chunk of food in the patient's mouth, you know, where they're choking to death on it. Make sure that they have some water available. Make sure that they NPO. What's NPO? No. No. Nothing, no. nothing by mouth, nothing for us. So if they have a big game, that's a good test question in there. You go to feed Mr. Smith, right? And there's a sign that's in NPO. What, what do you do? You have a food tray. You don't feed them, right? Mm -hmm. You confirm with the nurse to make sure that they're NPO because they have a food tray there. The biggest thing that you can do, and it's difficult, you don't want to <coughs> overread the question. Okay, don't do that. But never make assumptions. We've been doing that since day one. Don't don't make assumptions. So, Mr. Smith has a food tray on order, right? There's an NPO sign up there. And, oh, he's NPO. Good. I'm hungry. <laughs> Can't have food. <laughs> <laughs> right? Look at that yellow. <laughs> So you can check with the nurse because the possibility is somebody they changed their NPO order and they didn't take down the sign, right? 
she checked with the nurse. Hey, is Mr. Smith still NPA, NPO? No, no, no. That, I forgot to get the sign. Okay, go in there. Get the poor man his food. <laughs> Minus the jello. <laughs> Weigh, weighing patients is the same. Hey, make sure that the, there's safety there. There's no trip hazards, okay? There's the mechanical scale where you get on it and you move the, you move the thing back and forth. Are you familiar with that? Mm -hmm. Is everybody familiar with that part? Because if not, we can go get, we, the nurse has a scale we can go, not that anybody wants to jump on that thing, right? but it has a scale with mechanical and you move the slides back and forth. It's old school. Most of them are electronic. Now you get on top of them. They measure. You have a wheelchair scale here that you have. You would have to subtract the weight of the wheelchair to get the the weight right. The weight in bed. Most of the modern hospital beds, you you zero it out. In this, you zero out. It's measured in kilograms. Remember, our weight is measured in kilograms in a healthcare setting. So you zero that weight out, then you get the proper weight. The reason that's important, because all, all medications are weight-based. Uh, they may have a range of medication, but if you look in the pharmacology book, they're, they're always milligrams per kilogram, especially in pediatrics. So make sure that you, you have a weight, uh, a good, good weight that you, you don't, uh, you don't mess that up because that's that's something that's that's vital if, if you get a good good patient weight. Uh, the moro, like in the ICU, where they're given vasoactive drugs, maybe they really want a, a good weight. Most of the time, if, if it's really critical, not that they don't trust the PCT, but remember they're given a medicine that it's that it's weight weight based. The the nurse is going to make sure that they have the right weight. Okay before they, they administer the medicine. Uh, questions on it, all this? It's pretty, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory, right? It's pretty simple. What you do have to do, your, your biggest thing with this is just go through and pick out the, what sounds really important. Not all of it's important. Not long you going you're going to memorize. Like here, <clears throat> this therapeutic communication. Okay, you're not going to memorize all that. What is this telling you to do? Without even reading it, I said give the patient therapeutic communication. What is? Communication. Huh? That's talk to him. Yeah, you got to talk to him. Be nice to your patient. Uh, it's very hard for me to avoid the sarcasm, but, but you know, be sarcastic with it. I mean, that's just natural for me. If I'm not sarcastic, something's wrong. But uh, make sure they understand what you're talking about, okay? Uh, give them time to speak. Be nice to them, okay? Have them time to understand that. So read through here. Uh, one down here at the bottom I didn't highlight it but I just saw it one thing that's really important about communication is you being quiet enough, long enough for the patient to, to talk and, and that's difficult for a healthcare provider by the way because they're used to trying to get everything they want out okay and then right the, the, the waiting part is not an attribute that is that is common. They want to, especially in emergency medicine, they want to get everything out and get out, okay? So make sure that you're just, you're, you're nice to the patient, you're nice to the family, right? Uh, the page right before that is emotional support. There's questions over that, you know? Uh, just look through, give them feedback. Uh, most patients, above the age of probably now 40-ish, okay, are used to being, you look at them in the eye, right? Don't like stare them down. Look at them, talk to them, look at them in the eye and the face when you, when you talk to them, okay? Uh, listen. Really hard to 
pretend to listen. I mean, well, it's easy to pretend to listen. You're pretending like you're listening. You know when people are pretending like they're listening? Like you're telling them something really important? And what do they do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Where'd that come from? What? <laughs> okay. Huh? Oh, that's good. Really? <laughs> good that I had diarrhea? Getting you know, a conversation with people, you, you're being able to pick that out. You're like, you're not listening. You're not listening to me. Okay. I've had to tell a lot of teachers that in, in meetings. That's why I don't like meetings. I'm not big in them. Okay. Uh, it's like, hey, you're, you're not listening to what's taking place here. Yeah, I am. No, you're not. Because you're not in this conversation. Your head is in some other conversation. Okay? But uh, nonverbal communication is uh, important. I'm not really up on this bandwagon too much because everybody, all the psychology people say, oh, you're being here. What are they saying? Yeah, you're being a closed off. You're being standoffish, right? You know, you're crossing your arms. That's a nonverbal communication <laughs> that uh, you'd rather be somewhere else or some sort of other psychology BS, right? So you sit here and you're going, when do I cross my arms? You think? It's comfortable. Yeah, it's comfortable. I've got these things that dangle and I just want to cross them. It's comfortable. I've got a little spot right here that I rest my arms on, okay? You know, they put them on top of my belly and rest them, okay? They're, they're, it's a nice little perch, okay? So it's, it's, it's comfortable. Uh, anyhow, but do pay attention to some. You know, uh, one thing is to sort of hover over the patient. You have to get sort of close to the patient here, but, you know, don't, don't hover. A lot of times, uh, I like, to, if the patient's in bed, I like to pull up, if I'm going to be there for some length of time, I like to pull up a chair maybe and sit down at the patient level. I don't like to <laughs> do that, right? Just, just different things. And I highlighted this, I wrote me another note, uh, gen genuine interest. In what they're saying. How fast can someone pick up that you're not interested in what they're talking about? Yeah, it's like, oh, you're not really interested in this, are you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, every staff development day, I have that look on my face. When I have to go into these meetings and in different classes, I get that look on my face. <laughs> oh, I need. Therapy and so <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Don't get me going. Okay. Anyhow, uh, I do not play nice with that. But communicate. Okay. Encourage the patients. They might be that they they may not want to tell you that they hurt or something. If you have poor communication skills, if you're uh, if 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 you're real short and and with them, and, and that's not necessarily that you're a poor communicator, it's just the way that you, you're, uh, you know, uh, in emergency medicine, everybody's uh, to the point. We're very direct people, okay, uh, across the board, but the, uh, it, it's a learn, learn thing, and so, uh, but they may, they may not feel comfortable communicating with you, and that's a problem if your patient over long term, you know, that patient's in the hospital for a couple weeks over long term, you're taking care of them three days in a row. Uh, it may not be that, hey, they, they may not feel comfortable communicating with you, so that's important as well. But anyway, sort of read, read through there. Get that. Uh, almost done. Okay. Almost 
<laughs> hey, so ineffective communication, the same way. Just read, read through that. Uh, I'm sure that you guys, a, a lot of things that, that take place, this thing about you. Oh, yeah, I remember when I had my, you know, hernia, or I remember when I had this, or that. Uh, that and, and I do remember talking about this in sort of the first part of the school year. You know, you have those people who you have a problem, right? And the person's trying to talk to you about your their problem, and then all of a sudden you, you make it about yourself. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That's what it is. A one upper. Nobody likes that person, right? So uh, don't be the one upper, or don't be the complainer. Okay, it's it's very easy in him laying in the bed, the hospital bed. Okay, but don't try to one up the patient or the family. Just just listen a lot of times. Okay, uh, it is very difficult. In, in people in my profession to do not the one up but to because we're taught to control the conversation that's that's the way that we that we do emergency medicine we, we control the conversation that we have with the patient okay because of the emergent possibility okay if you're having a STEMI if you're having a heart attack I don't want you to tell me all this information I want you to tell me the information that I want but, so I'm controlling the conversation. Well, after 20 years of doing that, you, you, I have to, I have to make sure to step back and don't, don't control the, keep this thing shut, <laughs> right? It's, it's difficult because of habits, okay? But uh, do that. Uh, work, work with the patient, communicate with them, use terminology that they understand. Okay, in your patient assessments, use terminology that the patient wouldn't understand, right? A, a lot of times, and you see me saying, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay, uh, avoid uh, figurative type of speech, especially with people from a, a different country. Funniest thing, it's in Morocco. We're talking about this guy, and uh, he was saying, hey, do you need a ride? You know, you need me to take you somewhere? I'm like, no, we're good. I'm going to catch a cab. He goes, oh, no. Oh, I mean, he was he was serious. I mean, he was dead serious. Oh, no, 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 don't, 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 don't catch the cab. Don't catch the cab. Da very dangerous. <laughs> what are you talking about? And I realized, oh, you can't. I'm going to catch the cab, man. I'm going to catch the cab. I'm gonna... I said, okay, I'm going to take the cab. <laughs> oh no no no! Catch the law! Don't take the cat. <laughs> this was a real conversation. I'm not kidding. This was a real conversation that I had with this person that spoke eight languages. Eight fluent, eight languages, and he could go from one to the other in the same conversation, right? And I'm going, wow, that's pretty cool, man. Okay, but the uh, but he was worried about me taking a cab because he knew I'd get in jail. <laughs> <laughs> I forget the term we had to use. It was like uh, hire a cab. We're gonna hire a cab. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah but don't take that thing. <laughs> so, uh, don't urinate in public either. <laughs> social norms. It's socially acceptable for a male to urinate in public yeah. in Morocco. Uh, on the street. It's normal? It's normal. Uh, we, we were walking down the street. I, I mean, I'm not talking this is backwood desert. I'm talking about a, a city of like millions. We're walking down the street, we're going. What is that smell? <laughs> and we're looking at the, the, the walls and we're going, that's urine. And sure enough, we, we're, we're walking in and we're going, there's hand on the wall and we're going, oh, okay. <laughs> when, when in Morocco. <laughs> yeah. In, in an associate acceptable, pick your nose in public. 
you know, we, we frown on that. Now, I'm not talking like, oh, I got a little booger. Let me try to knock that little booger out, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> well, yeah, they do like those snow rockets. Yeah. 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 Whoa. <laughs> Check your side, you know? <laughs> All right. So, anyway, be, be aware of the diff- different things that we're, t- we're talking about. Because uh, you see people from from e- everywhere, okay. The next section we'll do later: oxygen equipment, okay. Uh, and, and you already know about this complications of oxygen, okay. Good good questions about that. Suction goes into that. Monitors and alarms, beds, and just just keeps going and going and going, okay. I hope that wasn't just all the same stuff that we went over to begin with. It sort of sounds like it. Uh, we'll have to talk about the feeding tubes and and different there's functional limitations that I believe is new that they, they want you to do. Okay. All right. Let's take a break. Good.